thing we have here. This is a 1985 Scat 1. Uh, it's a hovercraft. That's right, a hovercraft. This actually flies. Well, they had it registered as a boat. Technically, it's an airplane. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome, and I'm gonna make it run. When I found this thing, it had been sitting on this trailer back behind this building for over 10 years. It was supposed to be a father and son project that never got off the ground and literally, pardon the pun, got off the ground. Haha, <laughs> I'm so funny. Anyways, so what happened with it, I'll show you a picture of what it looked like. So yeah, the skirts were shredded and it's full of mud and water. Matter of fact, it's full of that still today. Um, I think it's actually a, a petri dish for mosquitoes. That's what's happening now. It's just growing things. The engine is originally a 36 horsepower uh, 277 Rotax engine. It's pull start, but not, not anymore, not this engine. It's basically a push-pull cable that operates the diverter in the back. It's nothing more than a fan. Half of the thrust from this goes out the back. The other half goes underneath and it blows the skirt up. And when the skirt inflates, it displaces air one-tenth of a PSI is all it is, and it's enough to lift this thing. And it's been described as balancing on a ball of air, and that's what it's like to drive, or so I've heard. This 277cc engine, that's not gonna do. We need one that makes about, oh, I don't know, instead of 36 horse, how about we go with 95 horse? Let's do that. <laughs> uh, I think either a Yamaha or a Rotax 700cc twin is what we're going to put in there. This now is belt drive. I may make this direct drive, I'm not sure yet, but the first step is cleaning this mess. Caution before starting. Fan guard must be in place. Remove all loose objects. Well, remove the loose nut behind the wheel. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to put more power in this. I guess this is a guard so that you don't uh, fall into it, I suppose. But I read somewhere that the shape of these can increase or decrease thrust because believe it or not, this is restrictive. So I might be looking at changing this. Um, get it all painted up and see what it does, but a lot of cleaning to do. This is supposed to be the primer for the fuel tank. I may end up needing, well, you ain't gonna need none of that, it's all junk. Throttle cable, we'll get a new one of those. What is this, who makes this? This is a Makuni, I might be able to rebuild it. It's not worth it. You can get Chinese repops of these for 30 bucks on uh, Amazon. No point in that. What's this business? Microfiber, micro sensors, yeah, micro garbage. Oh look, the grips, they're in good condition. Look at that, huh? These are just, uh, bicycle handlebars, old quill style stem. We'll change that. This is a kill switch, tether, in case you fall off in the water. This, look at that, what is that? Oh, <laughs> that's some sort of old school mechanical switch. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. We don't need any of this. I'm gonna get a new one of these. But for now, no. If I save it, I'll end up using it, and that's no good, so. This switch, this is probably a power wire and a ground that goes to that light, which that can all go in the garbage. This can, at the moment, yeah, they're so bad. Let me get something to cut this. Who 
would in their right mind buy something like this? That would be me. You know why? Most people would get afraid of this. They'd be like, I don't know anything about them. I mean, what's to know? It's a fan, it's an engine, it's a gas tank, it's a cable-driven diverter in the back with a throttle. I mean, it's pretty simple to me. That's power. I would imagine this is nothing more than output power to the main kill. Yeah, we'll be rewiring all of that. Wow, some heavy duty muck. Right, let's make sure there's no more hard parts that need to go in the garbage before I fill this bucket with sludge. Oh. Anybody hungry? It's an old ring pop. Remember those? They were terrible. What's this? That's one of those rubber clasps. Okay. My main power, what's this? <laughs> I think these are just access holes for service. Oh, what is that? It is full of water. I have to do some reading on that. I don't know why that's full of water. It's storage. This is two-stroke oil, I'm assuming. Okay, well, that's full of water, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't need to be. I hate to stick my fingers in there. I don't know what you're gonna find. Ah! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what do you got? You got an old plug wrench and a plug. Hey, anybody need a spark plug? Uh, BR. BR9ES, that's a 125. That's a two stroke 125 plug, like a YZ125. What else we got? Here's another one. Oh, here's another rubber plug. When I find the drain hole, I'll be able to use that. Okay, now let me throw this stuff away and I'll get this tilted back and get it cleaned out. can see gonna need to be a little bit of fiberglass repair and then these runners I don't like the condition of the runners so I'll be replacing those but that's easy enough all these are just rivets we'll, we'll put new ones right in the same spot those hold the skirt the air blows in here the skirts tied together and whatever air escapes lifts the craft. Okay, so it's not that heavy, but I mean, it's still an engine. Um, and it is stuck. And honestly, I will probably take it apart. I bet I could, I could bore this out and re-sleeve it, put a different carb on it, and make that run. But I just don't see a reason. Um, there's, there's so many more power options. So for now, it can stay right where it is. And uh, looks like you can add blades or take blades away or move them. 
I'm not sure, I don't know enough about the aeronautical part yet, but I will. I've only owned the thing for a few hours, so you give me a couple of days and I'll have this thing strapped to my back. <laughs> I'm glad I took everything apart, and of course, who wouldn't before you set this on the water, but these stringers, these are just caps that they put over top of these wood stringers, and uh, I'm gonna replace those, and then also in looking, there's a couple of spots, like right here, looks like there was a repair here. These rivets um, hold the clips that hold the skirt, and all that comes in the kit when you buy that. Um, so I'm not worried about the clips or the skirt. The first thing I need to do, number one, is source an engine. I had one, but now it's no longer there, so I have to get another one. Um, but with this upside down on some stands, I will spend a couple of days glassing the bottom of this. And once this is fully repaired, I'll turn it over and put the engine in it. <clears throat> It's so simple. I I'm finding it like astonishing that all you have is basically a, a cool shape of fiberglass, a fan, an engine, a bit of gas, something to sit on, and, and a push-pull cable. Like that's it, that's the whole thing. To me, it's beyond simple. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. Um, the next thing I need to do is get a snowmobile in here. If I have a running snowmobile, within a day or two, it can be attached to that and it can go back in and I can start to button it up. Um, I'm gonna order the, the skirts. Um, as soon as I go in the house, I'm gonna have them ordered. And when the skirts come, I'll have a sled here. And on the next episode of this build, this thing flies. That's where I'm going to have to leave it for this episode. I am combing the internet right now looking for junk snowmobiles with good engines. So please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Follow this one. It's going to be rowdy. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.